to order the meeting of the Harwich Conservation Commission for Wednesday, October 19th, 2022. And the first item that we have on the agenda is a request for a determination of applicability for 56 Hoyt Road, Map 23, Parcel W1, to convert a three-season room to habitable space. Good evening. Hello, good evening. I'm Stephanie Sequin, I'm an engineer with Roger and Wilcox, and I'm representing Stephen and Margaret Tringali, who are the owners of the property at 56 Hoyt Road. There is an existing um, building, a driveway, a couple of sheds. Um, uh, according to the uh, flood maps, uh, the, the back portion of the property is within the 100-year flood zone. Um, we went out and did a survey, located the existing buildings, and got some spot elevations on the ground surrounding the building. The elevations um, are anywhere from roughly 10.7 feet to 11.3 feet above uh, sea, le sea level based on NAVD 88. So it's like barely within the flood zone. But um, uh, the, um, uh, we also shot the top of foundation elevation, uh, which is 11.63, and the finished floor elevation, which is 12.75. So the structure itself is um, elevated above the flood zone. It's just the ground surrounding the building is just below that flood elevation. So what's being proposed here is uh, in the back um, of the house, there's a three season room. They want to just do some renovations to that room to make it um, year round habitable space. And that will involve um, removing the existing windows and replacing them with um, code compliant windows. Also um, putting in a set of French doors and the siding will have to be removed and replaced accordingly as they um, replace those windows in, in the door. Um, and in order to um, insulate it um, on the roof, they're gonna take off the roof shingles, put, in, uh, put on rigid insulation on top, on the outside of the roof, and then cover it with new roof shingles. Um, the interior, the uh, interior walls will have insulation and then they'll put insulation underneath the, the in between the floor joists. So um, that's the extent of, of the work. There's no change in the footprint. It's really just, you know, removing and replacing the existing um, structures. So uh, I guess I will leave it at that and see if you have any questions. Great, good, thank you. Amy, do you have any comments? Sure, there are no other wetland resource areas within the buffer zone to this. This is purely floodplain, and as Stephanie said, they're just barely, the ground is just barely below flood elevation where this three season room is now. Um, Stephanie, when I went out there, I noticed that the existing foundation under there is sauna tubes. Is it, you said they're gonna put insulation between the floor joists. Are they gonna keep a sauna tube foundation or are they going to do a slab or frog? They're just gonna keep the, the sauna tube. Okay. So, I mean, very straightforward, no digging. Um, and so in the event of a coastal storm, I mean, there's gonna be no additional damage to anything because um, the structure really is already there, but technically it's in our purview. So we have to review it. No change in footprint. Um, I would recommend approval with a negative two determination that work take place in a resource area, which is flood zone, but would not have a negative impact on the resource area. Thank you very much. Comments from the commissioners? Let's start with John. I don't have anything, thank you. None. Brad? Thanks. None. Mark? No Jim. comments. Ellen? We're easy tonight. Right. <laughs> I have no comments either, so. All right, well, there so might far, be some Amy hasn't audience. jinxed it. <laughs> uh, any comments from the audience? Thank you. Or other attendees online? <laughs> yeah, we're online. Hello? Yes. Uh, we're the owners. We're on. So okay. You have comments on this proposal? No, other than we would like to get it approved. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So, can we have a motion on this, please? Sure. <coughs> I move that we approve the request for determination of applicability for 56 Point Road, Map 23, Parcel W1, with the negative two determination. Thank you, Jim. Uh, second, please. Second. Second. Uh, Mark, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a uh, continuance of the uh, Air Lane Property Owners Association, the Air, Air Lane Beach for Sand Nourishment. Thank you. Is that here? Sure, if you like. I like being closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, my, my name is Ed Doherty. I was here a couple of weeks ago, and our association is looking to obtain a uh, permit so we can nourish our beach and uh, our beach is um, in between Pilgrim and um, just a little to the west of Quassim Lane and I'm pretty sure that uh, we didn't have comments from fisheries and wildlife did, did we you have get them this? We I did. got them okay. yep so that's what we were waiting yeah. on um, Fish and Wildlife, you know, Natural Heritage came back and the tip, the comments that I would have anticipated because it is technically plover habitat. So just like any, like the town has conditions about at the beginning of the season having a qualified shorebird monitor check the beaches. To be honest, I check that beach anyways because I'm there doing that whole stretch. So I would, if if you ever had anything, which you don't, you probably won't. You have a, revet, a lot of revetments. You don't have much room between the beach and the water. Um, but I would always, I would make you aware of that, but we can, I'm already there. Okay. So, but other than that, they would, they do have a time of year restriction that they could not do work, you know, during, during plover season. Um, except if it numerous times has been observed that there's no plovers, um, which a lot of times nourishment occurs during plover season. It's usually in June because that's when the town gets the county dredge. Right. So we would coordinate with that. But generally, if there's um, no, like we do the campground beaches, um, right. even if it's during plover season, and we have somebody um, escort a vehicle essentially out to that area. Because in order to get to their area, you have to go on at Bank Street or C Street Beach and put mm -hmm. a machine on. But it's, it's the conditions we would have anticipated. So I would recommend approval incorporating the conditions that Heritage put on into their permit. Thank you. Amy. And it's just nourishment above me in high water. Yeah. All right. Comments from commissioners, John. I'm all set. No comments. Thank you. Brad. Just uh, the structure of the monitoring plan. Um, it would report to us. Is it annual? Is it for three years? Sorry, I don't. <laughs> it's. Was there a plan required? Time of year restriction. State listed. <coughs> Um, there's not one conditioned. We can certainly add a condition that it would be, you know, annually when they, after they nourish that, you know, give a basic overview. Yeah, we've, we've consistently asked for this and, um, you know, amounts, <coughs> um, you know, wh where the materials put, that type of thing. It could be a very brief monitoring plan. So is that something you're looking <coughs> from, to get from me? Yes. So it, it, it varies uh, depending upon how much material the town is offering and, and where, how deep our pockets <coughs> are. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it can yep. vary from year to year, right. but it's just kind of a, a status update and a, right. a history of it, what you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Just <coughs> to document it, I, I think we typically, Amy, ask for three years of annual reports. Is that? Well, uh, annual reports, because I would <coughs> assume that after three year permit's going to be valid for three years. And at the end of three years, you can either ask for an extension or you can get a certificate of compliance to close the project out with ongoing conditions. And one of those ongoing conditions could be annual monitoring. So it would be, I would envision an annual, you know, monitoring report submitted by like September 1st of every year because <coughs> you're likely going to be nourishing in the spring. Right. Yeah and just detailing the amount that you did get. Remember how we talked about how it would be great if they could do more sand towards the west end right. of your stuff so it could migrate east, stuff like that. Yep. A couple photos, if yep. you know, yep. things. Just a, just a minor detail. So we're not looking to close out, we're looking to keep extending if possible. We can kind of decide after a couple years and see how it's going, if it makes sense to extend <coughs> or do a certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions, meaning that you could 
keep doing the project with certain conditions like monitoring ongoing. Yeah. But let's see how a first year or two goes, with okay. it and yep. we'll go from there. Fair enough. It, it could be as simple as a one-page narrative with yeah. photographs right. for, yep. for, for this Picture. location. Yep. Sometimes it's in more easy. detail, but I think <coughs> where you're putting it, how much you're moving, um, any interactions with endangered species, which we don't expect much, um, could be a very, very brief report. Yep. But that's pretty consistent with what we've asked for other states. <coughs> Good. Thanks, Mark. No remarks. No comments. No? When? No. Uh, remind me, when, we, when did you last <coughs> replenish? When did you last <coughs> renourish the beach? When um, wasn't this past spring, it was a year ago. So uh, you, you envision doing it on a primary machine? So we, we, the association likes to purchase as much sand when it comes available. It doesn't, you know, the, the priority is the, uh, the town beaches first. Yeah. And if the dredge is here and there's any material left they offer it up to the private property owners okay so right. it's just there's no you know it's not like we, we we're going to definitely take like 30,000 cubic yards yeah um at a whack it's kind of okay all right the well the good thing you don't have to go back to national heritage for another five years so <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good thing yeah Good. And by that time, I won't be the president. It'll be someone else's. <laughs> it'll be someone else's Don't problem. Don't be so sure. <laughs> not right. Uh, all right. Can we have a motion on this, please? Be sure. <clears throat> I move that we approve the notice of intent filed by the Air Lane Property Owners Association for Air Lane Beach Sand Nourishment, subject to the conditions received in the letter from <clears throat> NHESP and an ongoing monitoring plan. Thank you. Any comments? We have a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, I'm making <coughs> headway on the other project. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, That's set. So thank you. I will. Next item on the agenda is notice of intent for 49 Sacquatucket Bluffs Road. Map A, parcel G1-4, to raise and replace an existing building. Good evening. For the record, Sean Riley, Coastal Engineering. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can, Sean. Great. Uh, with me on the line, we have uh, Rob Calderero, who is the landscape architect from Paul Hemus, Sabre da Silva. We have Katrine Higgins from Wilkinson Ecological and uh, Demir Von Rohrbach from Coastal Engineering. Uh, I'm going to let Demir take it from here and go over the existing conditions and provide your presentation for the project. Uh, can I sh actually, does Demir have the ability to share his screen? We can give if you the ability. Like to share mine. Okay, can you see my screen all right? Yep. Great. Take it over, Demir. Hello, can everybody, everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Good evening. Um, I'm going to go over the existing conditions plan right now. Uh, we're located on 49 Sacramento Bluffs. We're abutting two abutters to the east and to the west. We're also abutting Nantucket Sound. Um, for the resource areas for this project, we have mean high water. We have a coastal beach. We have a coastal dune. We have NHESB and top of coastal bank as well as a uh, flood zone, VE flood zone. Um, so the existing property has two beach stairs that are going down to the beach, as well as a deck and um, a wooden walkway, a small wooden walkway. Um, there's a small retaining wall within the zero to 50 foot buffer, and the majority of the house is located within the 50 to 100 foot buffer. Um, the septic system currently is outside of the 100 foot buffer. Um, and Part of the house right now is located within the flood zone, the flood zone 14, the porch, the deck, and then a bit of the, prop the actual house itself. Um, we are proposing to raise the house and replace it with the new house, which will be on the next page. Oh, can you see that all right? Hold on, let me switch my view. Give me one second. Oops, sorry, I'm having 
difficulty. Give me one second. Are you seeing the proposed view? We yeah, also we have the big plans in front of us, too. Yeah. Okay. All right, you can walk through it, Demir, while I... All right. We can see it. So... It's just a little... no. Okay. For the proposed property, um, we are relocating the house about 20 feet back from where the existing house is to get outside of the flood zone and get away from the resource area, um, top of Coastal Bank resource area. Um, we're also eliminating the retaining wall within the zero to 50 foot buffer. Um, we're also moving that back. Um, we are going to be treating all of the roof runoff with uh, dry wells. We have the septic system outside of the 100 foot buffer and past what it is now, and we're upgrading it. Um, we're also proposing a three foot wide rollout walkway to the beach. And I guess uh, Katrine Higgins can now take over for the mitigation plan. Thank you. Good evening, Katrine Higgins from Wilkinson Ecological Design. So the plan we submitted, the, our restoration plan, um, proposes work spanning over just about 10,700 square feet of the property. And that's really within the coastal, on the coastal bank and within the 50-foot buffer. Uh, the area currently contains a mix of invasive, non-native, and native vegetation. So our efforts focus on invasive plant management, native plant restoration, and some lawn removal. So if you look at the, it, the site and, and this area in particular in terms of existing conditions, there are native species indicative of sand plain, heathland, and maritime shrub land plant communities, including swaths of Pennsylvania sedge, bearberry, bayberry, with an occasional beach plum and wing sumac and Carolina rose throughout the area. Um, there are several previously managed trees that we saw out yesterday with Amy and your team. Um, and they're dispersed throughout the project area and including um, some native pitch pine, scrub oak, black oak, black cherry, and the native, non-native Japanese black pine. Much of this vegetation and the native vegetation in particular is covered in a layer of invasive vines and that's including uh, bittersweet vine honeysuckle and carpet rose. Additionally, there's invasive and non-native species such as shrub honeysuckle, rosa rugosa, autumn olive, and weeping love grass throughout the area are fairly common. So if nothing is done in this area, these state-listed invasive species will take over. They'll continue to, to outcompete the native species, and that will reduce the quality of habitat available for wildlife. There's still some native vegetation and a good amount of native vegetation there, so we're seeing this as a great opportunity to get in there, remove the invasives before they've completely enveloped the entire area, um, while we can still preserve some of the native species that are growing in the area, like the nice beach plum. So we're proposing to remove the species by hand. Access is limited uh, currently, so we would be removing everything by hand and immediately seeding the area as we specified on our restoration plan um, with a native seed mix. We would use erosion control blanketing if needed. It's a fairly flat area, so we're not expecting to use, need a lot of stabilization, um, but we would install some erosion control blanketing if, if we thought the slope was too much and we needed a little bit stability before the grasses took hold and started growing. Um, and then once the invasives are held at bay, we would come back and plant. Uh, as shown on our restoration plan, you'll see we're planting, we'd like to plant seven eastern red cedar and about 90 shrubs, including bayberry, Carolina rose, beach plum, sweet fern, and bearberry, as well as literally hundreds of grass, grass and herbaceous species that are indicative of a sand plain heathland. So you'll see on our, our plan where we'd like to plant uh, species such as little blue stem, yarrow, butterfly weed. We saw a lot of monarch butterflies out there this um, fall. Asters, beach grass, and seaside goldenrod, just to name a few. In addition, there are tree species, as I mentioned, that have been historically pruned. And we've specified details on an approach on how we'd like to address those in our land management plan. We're not proposing any topping. Instead, it would be managing the vegetation over time through coppicing to maintain, essentially maintain the heights as they currently are over time in a natural form 
that preserves the vigor of the, of the species and maintains the habitat value while <coughs> reducing the height or maintaining the height without topping. Lastly, we're proposing to remove areas of lawn and bare soils. There's in particular on the eastern, um, prop along the eastern property line, there's about 500, sorry, 600 square feet of bare area devoid of any vegetation, as well as about 500 square feet of current lawn that we'd like to remove and restore and get, um, you know, in incorporate the native plants that I mentioned into those areas. So we feel this is a great opportunity to restore and maintain a naturalized buffer. We're not talking about a small buffer. This is the 50 foot buffer of this property, which is really exciting for us to be, have the opportunity to uh, restore it and maintain it and enhance it over time. And this will not only benefit wildlife, but it will also improve the stormwater function of the site. As I mentioned, those are herbaceous species, over 700 um, species. In particular, with their fibrous root systems, they'll be able to allow that those root systems get down into the ground and allow stormwater to infiltrate before the, it has a chance to become runoff. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Amy, do you have comments on this? Are the applicants all set for my commission comments? Yes, yes we are. Great. Um, so, yes, I met Katrine and Ian and Steve yep. out on the site yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I made some comments on the site and I followed up with an email, you know, that included Sean from Coastal um, on those. So hopefully what I say here isn't going to be too much of a, of a surprise and that's the goal. Yeah. Um, the commission has my comments too. So um, first of all, with the plan itself, I'd like to see the Coastal Dune actually noted on the plan. I know that the jurisdictional resource area is really top of Coastal Bank. That's your most landward resource area, but you should put things like Coastal Dune and Coastal Beach, at least notate them on the plan. Um, let's see. So they're proposing to demolish the existing home and replace with a new one. The current three-bedroom septic from 1990 would be upgraded to a new three-bedroom septic. Um, we talked about what resource areas they are. The current house is in a velocity zone. The new house, the house itself, would be pushed back and outside of the velocity zone and not in any flood zone. But the terraces and patio, uh, pool, and I would like to see the outdoor kitchen where it's going to be on the plan, because it doesn't show that, um, would be within flood zone. And to my knowledge, there are regulations that dictate, you know, what types of covers or whatnot you have to have for pools and um, you, for your utilities in flood zones. You show on your proposed plan a top or first floor elevation of 20 for the house. I think it would be helpful for the commission and myself to also know the elevations of the terraces and patios. Um, Am I correct that I see a top TW where is that top of wall, right? In, um, the C word wall is 18.2. Is that correct? That is correct. That so is how correct. high would that wall be? Uh, it should be only a couple of feet. I'm surprised that the contours aren't showing here. Uh, you've got elevation 18 um, way out here. You've got um, then elevation 20 that wraps back. So. Mm -hmm. It actually, uh, the grade is, is falling away as you get further away from the house. So it's, it's only, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but it's less than 30 inches. You're muted, Rob. Yeah, I believe it's less than 30 inches because we're trying to avoid having a, uh, a railing. Okay. Um, it would be helpful to know, um, I mean, are these going to be kind of, I don't want to say terraced terraces, or <laughs> but are they going to be different elevations where the terraces and the patios are? Um, it would be helpful to know. They aren't going to be different elevations, so we will add more spot grades to show that. Thank you. That, that would be helpful. And in general, the site, if you've been out there, has varying topography. It's high-ish up by the road. It dips down drastically, and then where the, the house is kind of built in, and then the grade goes back up and then down again towards the beach. So 
are these grades that you're showing on the proposed plan, even though if it's outside the 100-foot buffer, are these your proposed grades, or is there going to be additional grading on the site to accommodate the new house? Behind the 100-foot buffer? Yeah. We can provide that. Again, it, it's not in our jurisdiction, but we want to see how things are pitching and make sure you're not getting additional runoff um, into our areas of jurisdiction, et cetera. Um, it's just a very, it's a very drastically changing, differentiating site um, <coughs> with grades in there. So I would assume that you'd have to have some change in grades. Um, um, let's see. Um, I have not, um, I wanted to contact Shannon Hulst over at the county in regards to the, my questions about FEMA, but Sean, I believe you're also a coastal floodplain manager. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get back to it, um, can you describe actually the requirements for having structures like pool, kitchen, um, fireplace if it's gas um, in a flood zone, in, in a velocity yes, zone? Yes, Yep. So all of those are actually uh, covered within ASC 24 um, and also the state building code. So they're all to be designed uh, by a professional engineer and stamped by a professional engineer to withstand uh, any scouring or any wave action. Um, this is this is more of an erosion situation with the uh, the velocity zone. So um, they're assuming that if it, it's very peculiar. If you look at the elevation of the velocity zone, mm -hmm. it's elevation 14. Um, so you'd expect the ground level to be at elevation 10 or, or 12, where you have a wave height of 14, or you've got a wave up run up of 14. But essentially, they're looking at a scour here um, where you're going to have the area out in front that would erode back to right. that elevation 14 uh, within that area. Uh, we're up at elevation 20 uh, within the uh, coastal bank area, mm -hmm. dropping down to uh, 18, 16, 14, 12 in this interim area. Um, so uh, back to your original question, these need to be all designed, but they are allowable within the mass uh, building state code, which then refers back to the floodplain requirements, ASC 24, for designing um, any pools or any utilities within the uh, velocity zone. And Thank all you. those have to be submitted to the, the building department in order to get a building permit. Correct, and we in the conservation department see those after um, as well to make sure. Um, okay, so getting into this kind of the specific aspects you're proposing a rollout seasonal boardwalk which is within the 50 foot buffer zone when i went out there i wanted to see is the area that you're pr proposing it is it flat is it you know is it hilled um is there a real need for this it is um 53 square feet of more structure even though it's seasonal in our 50 foot no disturb it's very flat there there's currently just a path in the in the dirt and it's semi packed down um i don't see a hardship um that would warrant granting a variance for that and i, I correct me if I'm, i may be wrong because this was um just getting back from being away and i kind of had to quickly review all this um did did you request a variance for work in the 50 foot buffer uh, we didn't just because it was seasonal and it's just a rollout that would be on the existing surface, the ground surface. So yeah. we did not okay. um, request that. Okay. The commission and can it, decide that if it's necessary um, or if, if it would be allowable if you should technically request the variance or not. Um, I cannot recommend keep, um, having a rollout structure. It's, it's a flat area. Um, if I could, if I could address that now, Amy, we can we can remove that from the plan. So the concern was, if you went out there, you saw that all the invasives, <laughs> excuse me, are starting to creep into the path, mm -hmm. and some of them have uh, have thorns on them. Mm -hmm. And the client actually started out with a boardwalk, elevated above, um, above the ground to traverse that, and we quickly deterred them from that and let them know that when. Wilkinson does all this work. It's going to remove all these these vines that are mm -hmm. creeping into the path. 
So then we talked about the potential for this rollout uh, walkway uh, at, at three feet wide. And it's really just to keep that surface identified as to what could be uh, maintained. Um, we'd be amenable to, if it'd be okay to go to, I know you allow a four foot wide uh, pathway so that we could maintain to that three to four feet. Um, so they wouldn't be constricted down to a, a, a three foot wide path. Uh, and then just completely eliminate the need for any uh, rollout walkway. Yeah. Um, again, I'm just um, the reviewer, the commission will let you know what they what they see, but I can't, I can't recommend that. Um, so you have an overall increase of 1,659 square feet in the 50 to 100 foot buffer. Two to one mitigation would mean 3,318 3, 3, square feet of mitigation. You're proposing to remove um, about 500 square feet of lawn and um, about 600 and replant 600 square feet of mysteriously bare area um, in the middle of a thicket of invasives. Uh, it's kind of odd. Um, and then the rest would be restoration of the coastal bank itself. Now the coastal bank, if you've been out there, is a mix of invasives and natives. I can't give it an exact ratio. I would say almost 50-50 or 60-40, somewhere in there. Um, and some trees that have been cut incorrectly for years by um, previous owners. So when you're saying that you're showing a restoration or mitigation of 9,800 square feet because you're leaving a portion of it, I can't necessarily say it's 9,800 square feet. Um, I do think um, what you're proposing is very valuable, um, but I don't think it equals the amount that you're saying it does. And the la last thing I think I'd be, um, the major thing is right now you have um, kind of a low wooden retaining wall that's right at, this looks about the 50. It kind of crisscrosses the 50 foot buffer. And it's partial, it's just really right in front of the porches and wood decks. Um, like I said, the house itself, you're moving the house back, which is a good thing. But in that area, which is currently just sparse lawn at right now, you are adding you know, significant terrace and, and patio uh, usable area there. Um, the commission does have a regulation that um, no new buildings or additions be within 50 feet or 60 feet um, of, a, of a wetland. The patio and terrace is kind of a gray area, but I guess I would, in order to get true mitigation in terms of removing some lawn area and getting the whole thing a little bit farther away, I'd be interested in seeing if the project could shift a little bit more landward so we could achieve that 60 feet and um, use some more of that lawn area as mitigation. And I guess with with that, I'm, that's, those are my comments. Okay. Thank you. Comments from the commissioners? I'm gonna start with you, John. Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> take this off for a minute. Uh, I have a couple of things. One is, um, you referred to some of the vegetation as carpet rows. Um, when I was out there today and looking at particularly what's to the east of the pathway, I thought I saw Carolina rose there. There's Carolina rose there too. So that area looks fully vegetated to me with the exception of a bunch of bittersweet, but the bittersweet will eventually cause bigger problems than it's causing now, but it's not taking up a lot of space. So I would think getting rid of the bittersweet in that area would really, there wouldn't be a lot of room for any new planting in there. And I'm, I'm wondering whether you're, you're including that whole area in your, and I guess I would call it improvement by removing invasives in your number of 9,000 plus square feet. And I also think that to the west of the path, a little more complicated because there are Jap those Japanese pines in there, but there's still a lot of Carolina rose and other natives in there. Um, and it also looks to me like if you're removing the invasives and calling the Japanese pines 
invasives that um, may have to fill in more than on the east side, but still, I, I'd be interested in following up on Amy's comment that can't really tell how much space you're improving there. And so I'd like to know how you came up with that number of 9,000 square feet, what you're including there. Are you just including the whole area, or did you somehow try to subtract uh, places where they're invasives and would be bare when you, uh, or excuse me, subtract the areas with, uh, with the existing native plants, which seem pretty substantial in there? So if I could answer your questions, if yeah. that's all right. Um, so there is some Carolina rose. There's a lot of carpet rose, though, in, in areas. I'm not sure where particularly you were talking about, but um, we would want to get the bittersweet's a state-listed invasive species, and it's one of the worst. So that would be one of the things we would actually target is to get rid of that, the bittersweet. Um, but when we were doing the calculation, we're just showing that entire area is 9,600. We didn't really, and we could certainly do more math. I think, Amy, your percentages I would agree with, with the, like 50-50 or whatever, but we were just saying we're, we're, we want to manage this entire area and it's 9,600 square feet. Um, over the, the three years of the life of the order of conditions, bittersweet's going to pop up in other places and the other species are going to too. So we would be actively th in this entire area making sure that other things didn't pop up that we didn't really want there, like invasive species. So is carpet rose a state list? No, invasive? carpet rose is non-native, but it's, I think we probably. It's aggressive. Yeah, it is quite aggressive. It's not state listed though. We've had areas in Barnstable where like a whole hillside was just covered in that. Actually, Thompson's Field has a lot of it. Yes. Um, so it, it does take over. Okay. But it's not state listed. So I guess the other thing I just wanted to comment on was, again, the location of the, of the proposed uh, new home and the fact that, to me, looking at the plans, it looks to me, I mean, you're saying you've moved the house back further away from the 50-foot but it looks to me like everything's moved closer and the house itself is not that much further back. I don't know if you gave a number, I didn't catch it for how far back the new house is, but all this hardscape right up against the 50 foot, I think probably needs to be addressed. Um, uh, we prefer to at least see 60 feet at a minimum for any hardscape. Um, and I would also, following Amy's other comment, I, I have a little hard time deciphering the elevations on this plan. Um, and I did go to the site, but I haven't, can't quite correlate what I saw at the site with what I see as elevations on here. And there, there are contours here that are sort of spread apart. So I would like to see a bit more information about elevations there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Brad. Yeah, I think Amy really covered the um, critical points very well. I think John just reinforced that, so I guess I'll just add some emphasis. Um, the seasonal walkway, it sounds like it's off the table. I think that's a good idea because I, I would not support it as described. Uh, the big issue to me is, as John just described, the, the structures are coming closer to the zero to 50. That's surprising to me. Um, I really tried to uh, discourage that for a long time now. So I, I think as John and Amy mentioned, if this project could have that 60 foot line uh, above the 50, the 50 foot line with no new structures and then maybe lose some lawn in addition at that point, I think you would gain a lot. So I think this project is close. I just think it really has that one issue that's very concerning about structures coming closer to the 50. Um, in, in terms of the, the restoration and the mitigation, I, I don't really view uh, invasive plant removal as mitigation for new structures in the 50 to 100. That's my opinion. Uh, I, th 
think in this case, you have lots of options, so I don't think it's a big problem. You know, you've got a lot of square footage here. You've got to make up, what, 3,100 square feet. You're halfway there with lawn removal, approximately. So I, I think that, you know, you're in good shape, so I don't think I need to quibble too much about that, that opinion I have. Um, you've got a lot of room to move around and, and do things, but that, that's the big point, is, the, is, you know, structures moving close to the zero to 50. Thank you. Mark? I have nothing to add. Okay. Okay. Um, in general, I agree with Amy's comments. I think she did a very good summary of the comments with regard to this project. The area where I have the most concern and the, uh, what I want to emphasize is similar to what others have emphasized in that I think the whole project could be moved closer to Sacramento Bluffs Road which would eliminate some of the structure within the 5200 and some of the hardscape within the 5200. And so I would like to see if it was possible to move the whole project just back closer to Sacramento Bluffs Road. Thank you. Ellen. No comments. William? The only thing I have is I'll go back to the septic systems again. It doesn't say on the plan how they're going to be removed or anything, but it should be noted that they're going to be pumped and dug out in all the structural things, the septic tank and all the contaminated soil be taken off site and filled with clean sand. Okay. Stan, did you have comments on this? No. Okay. Um, I had a couple of questions here. <coughs> um, I think at the top, on your, I'm on the, the plan showing the proposed site improvements. Um, on the top table that you have there, you're showing an increase of 53 square feet. But I think that's yeah, that should be a, that's a good catch. That should be a decrease. Decrease, okay. And um, that's all right, uh, are the stone steps that are shown on the plan that are being added along the east side of the property, are those included in your hardscape calculations? Yes, they are. They, yes, they are. are. Okay. Um, one of the things I think we need to decide as a commission is whether or not restoration is equal to mitigation, <laughs> and if not, it sounds to me like the general feeling here is perhaps it's not. Um, but whether we want to give some credit for the work that's being done to remove the invasives. I, I think that's worthwhile, um, but it's not, it's not clear to me what that ratio would be if we did decide to do that. Um, another question for you, how is the new lawn area being treated? So you're talking about taking the existing lawn and now calling it part of the mitigation, correct? Correct. But you're adding two additional lawn areas off of the proposed terrace. How are you? How are you calculating? Adding those into your calculations? Yeah, those are, those are not carried as coverage. Uh, essentially, there's lawn. Actually, there's house there now um, within those areas. So we haven't carried that as a coverage within the 50 to 100 as lawn area. But have you subtracted that from the lawn area that's being converted to mitigation? Uh, we have not included it in the lawn area that's becoming mitigation. So okay. all the gray area is the lawn area that is becoming mitigation. Yeah, so you're that's taking away lawn and calling it mitigation, but then you're adding in new lawn in other areas. So, Something doesn't add up here to me. So in more recent conversations with the applicant, they actually don't like lawn. They like it much more natural than a lawn. So they, and, and this will probably be revised and it might even change further. But it was really refreshing to go out with them. They love golden, uh, out to the site, they love goldenrod, they love beach grass. So I think they're looking for a much more naturalized look. So I have a feeling the next, the revised plan that you'll see will not include lawn in those areas. Okay. Maybe it's beach that's, grass, maybe it's n nothing. That's you know, fine. You yeah. need to do one or the other, I think. Yeah. Either include yeah. it in calcs or, or put it down as, as mitigation area. Um, I agree with the 60-foot setback. I think that that's something which needs to be done. Um, there's one other question I had for you on this. Oh, the areas that are designated as planting areas around the house, um, what's your intention on what will be in those beds? You haven't identified that at all. Are they going to be ornamentals or are they going to be natives or 
or what? We can get that information. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, that the square landing that's on the walkway down to the beach, are you going to be replacing that or leaving yeah. it as it is or what? So the, the stairs are, are in tough shape. Uh, if anybody walked down them, you can, you can shift and rock on them. The, the both st sets of staircases are to be replaced in kind in the same footprint. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how we would treat that, if we would want to see that a four foot width restriction. I would have to see we don't know you know, when that landing was built. Um, I don't know exactly when all of that was done, if we had what our regulations were back then. Yeah, if it was even permitted. Right. If it wasn't permitted and they were redoing it, I would think we would like to see it. I can look, and I apologize, I don't have the previous plan. The commission recently saw this project with the previous owners because they had an after the fact filing because a portion of the existing house was built without a conservation permit. Um, so I can go back and look at old plans that we have <laughs> and see if it reflects that staircase. I just don't have it with me tonight. Yeah. All right. I know we're going to be continuing. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. All right. I have one other request whenever you're done. Okay. I, I think that covers the immediate concerns that I had looking at everything on my scribbles on these things, so I apologize. But um, for now, I, I think that's fine. Those are my big concerns. Thanks. Um, if I could, since you'll be revising plans, I've put it in my email, I believe, but if you could put distances existing versus proposed on the plan from top of Coastal Bank to edge of your new structure, edge of old structure, so we can see exactly how far back things are moving. Um, it's just a, it's a little hard to tell here. I mean, we could grab a scale, but if you could, you have other distances like to lot lines and stuff here. If you could just add that, that would be very helpful. Understood. I think with a little tweaking, and if you could move back a little, that might decrease the amount of mitigation you have to do because your square footages will be smaller. Yeah. Um, I think with a little tweaking, you could you could be there. So we want to through the chair. If I could just yes comment. Yes. Uh, so just I want to just reiterate what I'm hearing. So and there was a question about uh, where the existing structure was. It appeared that the house was getting close. So the house is actually 58.6 feet. So just call it 59 feet from the top of Coastal Bank. The proposed is going to 79 feet. So we're actually moving the house back 20 feet. Um, and if, can you guys see this aerial view? So essentially, we're pulling the house back, um, back to this line uh, in here. Let me just highlight that in red. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Uh, this line in here. So we're really pulling it back behind where this other house is. Right now, it's it's up in this area. So any further back, and we're really going to be start feel like we're looking into the sides of these two houses. Um, we, um, I think we can work with pulling the the patio back. Mm -hmm. um, and also adding um, mitigation where that, that patio would evacuate um, out in front of that. Would, I know that you, you have a, uh, a bylaw rule for uh, moving buildings and structures outside of the uh, 60. We're actually at 79 with the main house. Would you be amenable to um, meeting us halfway and, and Going back to you know the area where the existing house is to leave us a little bit of room, um, essentially would be cutting off uh, everything that is out beyond on the uh, on the plan. Let me just enhance this a little bit. So basically, cutting everything off that you see on the other side of uh, the red line, eliminating the footpath, um, and also just planting up the remainder of this area. Um, so you're going basically, I mean, you're, you're so that you're not going any closer than anything existing. We are not going any closer than anything that's there and the house is moving back at 20 feet from what's yeah. there and the house is moving back out of the velocity zone, which, um, is a benefit. Yeah. should be considered some sort of mitigation. We're eliminating the, um, the rollout footpath and we're actually increasing the, increasing the mitigation coverage, uh, by filling in those, those, these areas with. Uh, more native plantings. John, comments? 
Yeah, I just, I want to clarify your statement that you're moving back 20 feet, it sounds like to me. So what I'd like to do is just reference on the existing conditions and proposed plans the, uh, the border between, the edge of the, the E zone. Uh, on the existing plan, that cuts right across the back of the wooden deck and something that's labeled as porch. Um, yes. So it sounds to me like you're including the wooden deck and porch as part of the structure that you're calculating you're moving the whole thing back by 20 feet. Um, I think that's a little bit misleading because if you look at the, at the, at the edge of the flood zone on the proposed plan, <clears throat> the space between that and I'm not sure what PA is here, but the space between that and the edge of the new house cannot possibly be 20 feet. So basically, you're, you're replacing the porch and deck on the existing conditions with a large patio area that comes closer to the 50-foot line than the existing. That's my interpretation. And you've moved the bulk of the house back five or 10 feet or something. That's my comment. Other comments? Can we ask if, if they report what that distance is for the line? Because I, I do feel this is a case where we should have the 60-foot line um, for no new structures. And, and that's my opinion. But I, that, that's, a, I think, a starting point for me is to have that 10 feet of no structures from the 50-foot line. So knowing what that distance is would be helpful. Other comments? I, I would tend to agree with, with both of what John and Brad have said, that I'm, I, I think the 60-foot, the intent of the 60-foot is to keep people out of the resource area and um, to have this, this structure that's, that's proposed here, I don't think is, is effectively doing that. So I would be more in favor of keeping all new structure, including the patio, out of the 60-foot area. But that being said, you can come back with a proposal to us and we can reconsider um, you know, whatever you'd like to present to us. Our next meetings are November 2nd or November 16th. We would need revisions a week prior. November 2nd, so that is next week then. We'd need revisions? Yep. And how's our agenda looking for that week, Amy? I hesitate to say because last time I said we had, like coming into tonight we had a heavy agenda and we have a fairly lighter one. So we could put it on. If they wanted November 2nd, we could do November 2nd. If you want November 16th, that's fine too. It's up to you. Uh, the second would work. Seeing if they could get it done. <laughs> if for some reason you're, have, you're, have you're, you you can't, the then, then the architect. just request a continuance if you're not ready. But yeah. no, we're ready to request a continuance to the second. All right. Can we have a motion, please? Sure. I'll move that we continue the hearing on the request for a notice of intent for 49 Sacramento Bluff Road, Map Eight. Parcel G1-4 to our meeting of November 2nd, 2022. Thank you. Can we have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for all your time and input. Thank you. Sorry, can I make a quick comment, a general comment, um, before we move on to the next hearing? Yes. Just, just briefly. It, it, it's mostly so I don't forget this, but I think the whole issue of invasive plant removal is mitigation probably could use a little more clarification and our regulations and yes, bylaws I agree I don't know if we have any appetite to take this on but I, I think the whole industry is moving towards more responsible um, mitigation in this regard some of the past work resulted in more open space which didn't really help our interest so I, I think maybe a little more clarification on how it should qualify 
we can and, talk about and that. So there is, there is, you know, a value to that, but maybe it doesn't have the same value as removing the lawn or something else. So, so maybe it's a ratio yep. that's right. specific for invasive plants. Yeah. Yep. And perhaps, do we know if any other towns are have addressed this issue? Not that I know. It'd actually be a good question that I can maybe chat with Katrine about because Katrine works in other towns and deals a lot with this. So maybe offline we can chat about what you know. No. Thank you. All right. That is a good ring. <laughs> Next item we have on the agenda is a notice of intent for 11 Skinnequit Lane. Maybe he wants a call. Uh, map 17, parcel A1-H3 for a demo replacement of a portion of a single family dwelling. They requested a continuance to November 2nd so we can iron out the issues of whether or not this is actually riverfront or not. Okay. Uh, we're pushing a lot on, onto that meeting then. What? We only got one or two new filings in though. We had a couple continue. It. I, I say it's stacked every time, but guaranteed one or two will drop off. So All right. I would, I would just, yeah, okay. November 2nd. Can we have a motion, please, then? Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll move that we continue the hearing for the notice of intent for 11 Skinnequit Lane, Map 17, parcel A1-H3 to our meeting of November 2nd, 2021, 22. Okay. Thank you. And second, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And the motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda, notice of intent for 14 Mill Point Road, map one parcel J1-94 for proposed rear pier ramp float and dredging. Amy, they've requested a continuous November as second. well. Yep. All right. Can we have a motion on this, please? Sure. Uh, I'll move that we continue the hearing mm -hmm. on the requested notice of intent for 14 Mill Point Road, map one, parcel J1-94 to our meeting of November 2nd, 2022. Second, please. Second. Wayne seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Next item, notice of intent for three Mark Lane, map 30, parcel G5-3 for a new dwelling. I believe we have another request for continuance this time to November 16th. Can we have a motion on the continuance for this, please? Sure. I'll move that we continue the hearing on the notice of intent for 3 Mark Lane, map 30, parcel G5-3, to our meeting of November 16th, 2022. Second. Seconded by Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. If all our meetings were continued <laughs> like this, we could cancel the meeting pretty soon. <laughs> it's going to catch up with us. Yeah. They're gonna, yeah, that's going to catch up with us. It will, sooner or later. Uh, next item we have is a couple of requests for certificates of compliance. First one is for work done at 19 Wequasset Road, map 5, parcel K1-41, for the conversion of a porch into a sunroom and other work on the property. Amy? Um, we heard from Mr. Stevens, the owner, this afternoon. He could not attend tonight, as I had said to attend the meeting tonight, and he couldn't do it. Um, he said he can be in attendance on November 2nd to discuss this. So it's up to the purview of the commission. This is to discuss that low wire fence that was installed. Is that still up? I haven't been by, but I'm guessing. Okay. Um, do we need a motion to? No, you don't. It's um, it's a request for its certificate, so you don't need yeah. it. You just an agreement that <coughs> it can wait another two weeks. All right. And if you could let us know if that's still up. Yeah, I will go by. Yeah. Um, next week, I'll definitely take a look. Um, yeah. All right. Good. And the other item, uh, the other request for a certificate of compliance is for fault five. Excuse me, five Salt River Lane, map four, parcel A one B three for a shorefront protection. They went and installed the um, benchmarks in the wall this last week or this week. So they haven't had a chance to put them on the plan yet, but it will be ready for your next meeting. So no action is needed, um, but they'll be back. Okay. All right, good. 
next moving on, we have a show cause hearing for 16 Old Coach Lane for unpermitted deck, landscape timbers, stone and mulch, fire pit and seating area, removal of sediment in the wetland resource area and its buffer. And I think also there was some pruning that we want to discuss as well. Yeah, I heard about that. Yep. Hi. Hi. Good Hi, evening. Michelle Hinton from Ruben and Redmond here on behalf of Natalia Wallace and Natalia, as you can see there as well. Hi. You want me to start? If you would, Amy, if you would give us some background on this. Yep, sure. So in August, we were made aware of some activities taking place on this property um, in the pond and in the buffer zone to the wetlands. There's kind of wetlands all around this property because as you enter in as well, there's wetland low wetland area and then of course the pond and itself so um i issued an enforcement letter um which M natalia and michelle received i've given a copy to the commission and issued a fine in the amount of fifteen hundred dollars because for five activities um and those activities were three hundred dollars a piece the activities that were noted was the installation of a deck underneath a second story deck where there had previously just been crushed stone for drainage, installation of new landscape timbers, installation of stone and mulch in an area that was previously natural, removal of vegetation and sediment from near shore area of grass pond, and the creation of a seating area with fire pit within the buffer zone to a wetland. Upon further inspections, which we've made um, last week with, um, I believe, Natalia present, and the commission, when they went to visit today again, they also noted that the bank itself, not, not like recently, recently, but within the past year, it appears to have been pruned, vista pruned, and the sweet pepper bu bush um, was, was cut to achieve a better um, view, it appears. So um, we can talk about it. I have, I, to, in my review of the commission, to the commission, which I'm happy to provide you as well, I do have recommendations for the commission. Do you want to kind of open this up for discussion first, or do you want to hear my recommendations? I, uh, why don't you go ahead with your recommendations, Amy, and we can have yep. further discussion. So a lot of this activity occurred with what's in what's called our 50 foot no disturb zone, which is 50 feet from the edge of a wetland, which is really a no touch area and requires variances for any work. So this, any stone that you added, mulch, new landscape timbers, seating areas, fire pit, if that's within 50 feet of a wetland, um, I'm recommending removal of that by, within a month. Um, and installation, because it's getting towards the end of the season, um, the growing season, installation of a loose jute matting that is secured like with ground staples and seeded with a native grass mix to stabilize it for the winter time. I'm recommending you submit an after the fact notice of intent with a site plan to revegetate that slope leading down to the pond and the 50 foot buffer zone that was impacted by February 1st of next year. Um, the idea would be is to have this ready for replanting and, and in the spring of next year during planting season. Um, in this application, I would like you to include any work done within the 50 to 100 foot buffer without a permit for the commission to then decide if it can be kept or, or if it must be removed. Um, I don't think any work needs to be done in the pond itself where you removed some of the sediment um, fairly superficial, not too deep. I think the pond in, in time, and it already is doing it, is naturally settling, but the sediment is settling back out. So I don't think you need to do any restoration in the pond itself. I think you just leave it alone and it will sort itself out. Um, I recommend the commission uphold the fine. The commission can talk about the additional things that they saw, which was the Vista Prune um, out there. And, um, but yeah, that, those are my recommendations. We can certainly talk about them. Um, you'll have time to do that, so. Okay. okay, all right, fine. Do you want to 
have any do you have anything you would like to say before we ask for no, comments you on? go ahead and ask me and michelle too I, um, oh, I, I have work. a couple of quick comments. oh i have a couple of quick comments if i may have a chance to speak go ahead um i just wanted to make a few points in terms of the um fire pit i just wanted to reiterate again as the commission saw it's not permanent it was removable and I'm not aware, unless I'm misunderstanding, that that um, one is not allowed to have chairs in the 50-foot no disturb zone. Is that is that the case? That that's actually a violation if someone has chairs seating in the in the 50-foot no disturb zone? Not necessarily. So let me pass around the photos, Michelle, that you submitted at towards the end of the day today. I didn't have a chance to email it to the commission, but I made a few. Yeah. I made a couple copies. So. Great. I'm assuming Natalia sent these to Michelle, the photos. Yes, correct. Um, of yeah, what so it I could... looked like previously. Yeah. And there was, a, there was a seat, like a bench and a little table and a couple step stones back there. And you could see it was just moss previously. But I'll pass these around. So it wasn't you know, you. shrubby vegetation, but it was not hardscaped, if you will. Right, so there there was an existing. I only have three, so okay. spread them around. Um, with larger stones, um, and yeah, place the smaller stones around it. Um, in terms of where the stones and mulch was placed, I just wanted to make it clear that she didn't remove any vegetation, and there was just kind of soil that was there that it was placed on top of. So there was no removal of any plantings um, or whatnot to do that. Um, also, in terms of the Timbers. Um, there were existing timbers there that were in poor condition, and she did replace the timbers um, in the same location as the existing timbers. So it, it was in an area that was already disturbed. Um, and then the other thing in terms of the deck, Amy, I don't, I'm not sure if you had mentioned that. The um, there was a gravel area, and then there's timbers now in the lower deck, which is beneath is in the same footprint of the second story deck. So we would ask in terms of that if we can submit an after the fact notice of intent. For that, for for that, that. piece I envisioned as being as part of your after the fact notice of intent, I, we, would, right. we need a site okay. plan to show, we have an old site plan from the previous owner. Yeah. We can certainly start use, use that as a guide, but we need a new site plan and that way we can see exactly where the 50 is my concern is that for the fall um getting into the winter is to get the stuff that's on the slope itself like this some of the stone and get the stuff that's closest you know well within the 50 that's obviously in the 50. get that removed get the area seated and matted to um hold for the winter and the things that are close to the 50 and to the 100 to have you do an after the fact filing for but the slope okay in terms of the, the seating i understand you know the removal in the first 50 feet but in terms of the seating i don't it's my understanding that there weren't any plantings there you know initially that she removed so um i would think removing the some of the stones in that area would you know get it back to where it was prior yeah i think i mean removal of stones and mulch and would go a long way maybe bringing in a little bit of loam some seed and then the matting because it's going to be hard for anything to germinate at this point unless i mean once you get into november it's hard can i say something i think in one of the pictures you can see that it was kind of also mulch and it, they also had like a little pad mm -hmm. so, yep. oh, okay um, i just wanted yep. that there was not nothing over there that it was okay like an old vegetation or so something. Mm -hmm. So just, just to clarify, Amy, um, I'm just trying to understand what, what you were saying. Did you have to say that anything in the 50 to, obviously we need a delineation to make sure where we know where the lines are because we, we're not clear now. But I think I understood you, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you said anything that's within the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone that um, could be part of after the fact notice of the that's time. my recommendation the commission. the commission can say otherwise um but right. keep in mind that if 
you asked for something you know that was done in the 50 to 100 that wasn't there previously and you're asking permission for it now you still have to you would have to mitigate at that two to one ratio so do additional mitigation and that site is a little tough because outside of this immediate area that was stoned and mulched like where the new the patio area is a lot of that site is pretty naturally vegetated so you may have to get a little creative if you want to have new hardscape if you will or coverage with patio stone seating area within the 50 to 100. But the movable, I cannot have the chairs. Those chairs are like a light chairs. I'm not worried, me per, and the commission can no, cor I'm correct me. No, because I don't know, and I wanna be totally, that's what yep. I'm here, I wanna do the things. I don't have an issue with okay. the chair, a, a chair and a portable. Yeah, the, in a, the, in the fire pit is, is very light. I can move it because it's kind of fake. Did you see it? It's kind of I fake wood. did, but what I was a little concerned with is that you had a propane tank with a hose that went underneath. It's just a little bit so people don't trip. Okay. And that was installed yeah. by them. Okay. By, my gosh, this company, Robbie's, and they say by security because people can just trip. Well, we but don't want them to trip, right? Exactly. So they only, if it is very, very up, it's not deep inside. It's just a little cover because at night people can just trip. But did you talk them. to the fire? I mean, that I, I'm, I'm not a fire. I don't work for the fire department. Um, having the permit with the Robbies. Robbies did all the permits for that. There was no permit. For Robbies? They did all that. Oh, uh, we didn't see it so for that but oh, okay. I, I was concerned about you know a pro essentially a hose with propane running from a propane yeah, tank to a fire pit underneath a mulch bed um so our local fire inspector bruce i've made him aware of the things and he was supposed to be in touch with you to go that and look good. at it I, I mean i know you don't want a fire either so no of course <laughs> but no. we did not yeah. see Oh, because uh, all the work of gas was made by Robbie's, so I have to ask them. Everything was uh, that company did all. Robbie's. Robbie's. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's it? ultimately though, it's your responsibility to make sure that they have permits. I know, and that's what I. Yeah. If I, so, yeah, that's what I was, yeah. and yeah. I, I can follow up with them. That would be good because I can absolutely. See, so when I go into my database on my computer. When I pull up your address, I not only see my permits for conservation, I see every other application for building, electrical, health. I didn't see any permits for this. Good. No, I can follow up. That with would be them. great. Yeah. And you're sitting zero to 50. Another quick thing I, I don't. Want. That's questionable there. That's why we need a definite line. We have an old plan we could work off of. But. Go ahead. Sorry, Michelle. I'm sorry, um, I also just wanted to point out that I know at the site visit last week, there was a mention by one of the commissioners that they believe that um, Natalia did some cutting um, down by the pond. And she has, as she said at the site visit, that she didn't do any. So she's only owned the property for about a year. So I would expect that that may have been done prior to her ownership. I just wanted to make that clear. It's hard to. Um... I talked with Melissa about it today. Unfortunately, I couldn't go back out today. I was requested to do something else. Um, the cuts don't look very recent, but they don't look that old. I would put them about a year. So what the good part was is what was cut. I looked at the photos. It's all sweet pepper bush. It will, it, she didn't disturb the ground. That's just gonna grow back like gangbusters. It's up to the commission. I mean, I don't know if we can prove exactly when it happened. Yeah. But we, it, it should, <coughs> without a permit, you can't prune any, you can't prune. So in the future, I, 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 didn't prune I know, it. but I'm just letting you know, in the future, if things do grow up, Definitely. you need to. Oh, no, no, now I know. Now you call me. But uh, <laughs> this one I didn't do. I, in the way that I admit the other things, I, that one I Yeah, I, I tend to believe her. She admitted, you admitted the other things. I so. admitted right away. I have yeah. no way to tell you, oh, why I did something if, in the same way about I want to work I, with this one, yep. and I, I'm very happy. And the way when I got the house, that was the whole goal to have it very ecological because I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from a mountain, so I like this type of environment. So I really want to mm -hmm. do it that way. Okay, good. So, so comments. And also, yeah. I just 
Yes. I just wanted to, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I just wanted to request that the fine can be waived or reduced because she is, um, Natalia is trying to work oh, with I, the commission I, I, tonight. I think, I think that it was, none of this was intentional. Yeah, I think that's a little presumptuous at this point um, until we have comments from the other commissioners. But thank you for that. Stan. I don't have any other than what Amy said. All right, John. Yeah, I mostly agree with what Amy has said. Uh, just on the pruning on the bank, I think that we at least, we probably already have made it clear that this, that none of that growth can be disturbed in the future. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we need to put it in order of conditions or anything. If we get to that, uh, clearly no more pruning on the bank, regardless of where that came from. Yeah. And as far as an after the fact notice of intent, I would personally not be inclined to encourage the expectation that an after the fact notice of intent for all of this work would be received particularly favorably. I would not receive that particularly favorably. Talking about specifically the seating area and the fire pit, I don't think it's so much. I mean, looking at the photographs here, there's a little bit of seating area in those photographs. I don't know how that represents what was that was there before, but it's a much bigger seating area, but more to the point is the whole area has been covered with mulch, which suppresses all the growth there, which I don't think we would agree to within the 100 foot. Um, it's, so if you're wanting to come back with a notice of intent, need to think about all the comments we've made here about what would actually be acceptable assuming you're starting from scratch. I or think you're starting from where it was when you bought yeah. that land. The engineer who will have to do your who will do your site plan can also help kind of arrange where a seating a little seating area could be um, where certain things can happen as well. Um, Cuz we but I didn't mean to say like everything would be approved after the fact. I was talking about definitely nothing in the 50, but in the outer, other than a chair, you know, chairs or something maybe. But, but I need a permit for the chairs. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm so You confused. don't need permission for a chair. Oh, okay. The chairs I to, <laughs> on the grounds, no, okay. no. But let's. Yeah, yeah, I got you now. I'm like, oh, okay. Do, can I have the chairs? Like, oh, okay. But any preparation for the ground where you're going to put the chairs, that's another question. So yeah, just if it was not an area question, for go. chairs, that would require a permit. Yeah, it sh you should have some ground cover, some grasses that hold the dirt. Because also, if you just have dirt, you're not going to want that to, uh, you know. know, you want to keep it down too. So you got some sort of ground cover. Um, that area, that left area was with mulch, with, but well, a little bit. There was and some then mulch it was like and a moss. There's a lot of moss there. Yes. Okay. Thank you, John. Brad? Not too much agree with what uh, we just heard. I think um, having a delineation to see if the seating area is in the 0 to 50 is really important. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's not, if it's in the 50 to 100, then I think we could consider the request to rescind that fine. I think the first four items should not be rescinded in terms of the fines. I think they're, they're too egregious. Uh, so number five, it, it kind of depends. But the seating area, it, it's, a, it's a constructed um, piece. You know, it's not just placing chairs on the ground. It's, it's a constructed area. So um, that's pretty important. But that, that's the only possible fine that I would consider rescinding. Okay. Thank you. Mark? I agree with Amy. Um, as things were stated. Okay. Jim? Uh, yeah, I agree with Amy and, you know, the way Amy laid out how we should proceed on this. I'm okay. in total agreement with that. Okay. Al? And Laura Donalds. Wing? It's pretty much been covered. I, I agree with Amy, too. Okay. Um, I have a couple of comments. Um, there are a couple of things I think. Well, one question for you first. When you purchased the house, what kind of air conditioning did you have in it? What kind of what? Air conditioning. They they were there was not air conditioning. So you added split fins yes, in it then. Yes, I added. Mm -hmm. So there's an outside compressor oh. that's been added as well. That was also made by Rovis, the company. By Rovis again? Yes. They didn't get permits for that either then. 
I'll double check, but Go last on. time I checked, they didn't have permits. They, yeah. I, I don't know about it, but um, when I get in touch with them, they had a delay for the permit, so uh, it's hard to me for to know because that's a big company and there's, it's like a, what can I say? It's a company that a lot of people use, mm -hmm. yeah. so I will be surprised. Yeah. I'll double not check because I, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of shocked because. I remember when we hired them, uh, just, just we going, had a little bit of Just so you know, delay. going forward, I mean, when you have a contractor do work on your property, you should ask them for those permits. I, oh, I didn't, I don't have to have them. before that. Because, because if you get point. challenged on this in the future, you're going to have to Good show up with the, per, with the permits. Good point, and so, I really appreciate um, that. Honestly, I trust a big company, so, so I think I even yeah. imagine that I didn't... Yeah. It would be if if I had somebody like a, a guy from a corner doing a job, it would be yeah. different. But having like a huge company with reputation, I never thought about it. Yeah. But it's a good point. You know. They probably would have charged you more. Oh, <laughs> the last time I checked, <laughs> so when I looked, it was right in, at the end of August when we met. Um, that's when I looked to see what permits you had, and I didn't see it then. And I know. I would have seen them, so I will. I will double check because we could have we could have missed it too. But and I can check with them. You too. check with Robies. I will check in my computer system. Okay. Yes, no, sure. Okay. And again, they charged me a lot, and I know I had a delay for the permit, so it's yep. kind of oh. Well, one of the other things that I think you've missed, Amy, is um, in addition to there being the second story deck, there was a pergola added over the deck, and that pergola has now been roofed over with. Um, fiberglass corrugated roofing panels. Oh. So they've changed the pervious deck basically into an impervious structure. Um, all the runoff from that deck now, instead of going into the ground underneath the deck, is going to be running down to the pond. Yeah, so we would definitely for that in your, um, if it's outside the 50 foot buck, well the deck it's is in, there. Yeah, it, well the deck is 42 feet from okay. the house, from the so wetland. So they'll need to be <clears throat> drainage and that would be like a drip line along the edge. Well, I think we'd want that like removed, that. the roof anyhow, and that wasn't permitted. I'd have to look, let me, let, let's talk about that, because we have a deck that's our, that was on previous permits. I know they're putting a roof on it to, for shade. No, it's not for shade. It's clear. It's a clear roof. Oh. They have the pergola. Yeah. Right. On top of the pergola are those corrugated fiberglass clear plastic panels that cover the entire span of the deck. And the water goes all the way down. Right. It goes right off the end of the deck all toward the, the pond. Always. Run off. Always. Yeah. Oh, on okay. the back so I, but I it's on the back because all my furniture get wet so it's that part is open mm -hmm. and I did I explain well so this part is totally open right I understand that oh, okay yeah, I know I've been there um, uh, we can look into that yeah because yeah, I I would depending on how you what your recommendation is then we would want to add that to um, the work that we'd want done by next month sometime yeah, I'll go back We're out. We're not going to allow it to remain in place, yeah. which I'm not in favor of. To I, be understand, I understand. Um, then there's also an electrical outlet down at the foot of the, about probably about five foot from the toe of the uh, bank that yeah. is permanently installed on a post in the ground with two works. outlets and an extension cord that runs up the hill to the chandeliers that we have in the trees and the lights and everything. So that was done at some point as well. The it's chandelier. brand new. It's no, brand no, new. the yeah. chandeliers are connected to the house. Well, there's an electric outlet down on the bank. Down, I didn't even know about that one until it's the day that brand new. It doesn't even have dirt on it yet. Well, so I, I use the one on the back, on the front. Yeah. But that one, it's it's it, it was not. Somebody uh, did it. Well, I have to check. I think that I think that was that issue was raised at the site visit last week, and Natalia had indicated that that was already present with that outlet. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand what you were saying, Michelle. I was saying that I think someone raised that at the site visit last week, and Natalia had said that that specific outlet um, was already existing when she purchased the property. Yeah, I would I would doubt that 100% given the, the condition of it. It's not been subject to any weather at all. 
So it's not, uh, let's put it this way, it hasn't been there for a year and three months or so since you purchased the property. Um, and those are the only other comments I have. So you have, well, I guess we can entertain the request that Michelle's put forth to um, look at the fines that have been proposed uh, and the ones listed in the letter that was sent to, um, to the property owner at this point. So we have, yeah, go ahead, Amy. My recommendation is that you don't rescind them yet at least or um, it's it's good that you're here you invite us to the property of Michelle but before we talk about any change to the fine structure I would recommend that we see how compliance goes with the timeline established and it's something I can go over I'll put together in an email well, not just an email it'll be an enforcement another an enforcement order but um, with the timeline we've kind of set here. Um, that being said, I mean, no, it's I, it's a tight timeline for your first, which is getting the stone and stuff out of the 50. Did that for a reason, just to kind of keep you on top of it and to get something, you know, stabilized for the winter. But keep in touch with me. You know and how hard it is to get workers, but I, I that's why I'm saying keep in touch with me. You need to make a. We're trying to get a good. Have, you make a good faith effort towards working towards Absolutely. compliance here. Um, and then at the, so you're proposing what sort of a deadline? November 21st for getting that stone off the slope. Um, removal of new stone that's in the zero to 50, removal of new mulch that's in the zero to 50, and putting down, um, it would be a little bit of loam to help get some seed established, a loose jute matting with staples, and uh, landscape staples, just to hold it for the winter by, June, by November 21st. Okay, so how about the deck? You, you've listed that, but you've not suggested anything for that. The deck? Yeah, it apparently after. The, the new deck oh, that's at ground that's, level. You said the corner of that's 42 feet from the wetland? Yep. How do we know that for certain? It's on the, the septic, old site plan. septic plan. I mean, would the commission entertain that because it was stone underneath before and it's a deck now would you consider that and it's, it's the same footprint underneath would you consider that as part of their after the fact notice of intent it should have been permitted right so but do you say I mean I think we're asked Ernie's asking do we want it removed oh. now or because it's underneath an exist a second story deck and is over what is what was gravel, as long as it stayed in a deck, I would. Con you know, I can't say I'm in favor of anything yet, but I wouldn't be opposed to seeing that as part of an after the fact filing. I, I agree with that. I, I think to right now say to remove it would be premature. Yeah. Okay, and then the landscape timbers. Did you mention that? Yeah, I'm unclear. Natalia, when we met out there, you said there were some old ones that of land, that you replaced. Did you see the Can I see them again? <laughs> but I, I thought there were, I thought you did install some new ones. But I just replaced that one. It, you can see it in the photo right there. If not, I show you when you go through my, uh, my property. Yeah, we can make another appointment yes. to come out. I would love that you, because I think I, I found not a lot of photos from outside, yeah. but we can, I can show you what it was. It was there, but it was with nails. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, you, as These you don't really show timbers, oh. um, where you have timbers. Oh. And um, we have photos from, we also have photos, we don't have them here, but from the real estate listing before you bought the property, so I'll look at those too. Okay. But if we find that there are new ones there that were not previously there, though, and replace the one that you that I show you. Remember, mm -hmm. I say, oh, I replaced this one. 
I don't remember exactly which ones because there's, uh, there's a lot. I know. <laughs> there was one that it was absolutely mm -hmm. with nails and everything, mm -hmm. very, very dangerous that I, I replaced it. That would make sense. So. We can send you some photos. I think, I think she has some photos yeah. that we can send you. And they I send you that one. I can meet you back out there next week. I can't Perfect. this week, but we could do early next week if you can. I can. History. Yep. Yeah. So those are all, those are all new. Yep. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, I, maybe you're looking at the same thing, but this is the real estate listing. Yes. And it shows that corner of the house. And there are timbers there, but they're at grade. They're not. Um, well, if, if you look at this picture that she just sent to us this uh, evening, and if you look at this picture from the Airbnb listing, you can see the same tree with the knot at the bottom of it. Here, over on this side, is all new landscape timbers coming across this side that don't show up on this yeah. on this photo. Right. That's So I think those are new. Um, I mean, all the evidence it here would be seems to indicate. For when do you go? We yeah. can go together. But if it's somebody, fine. if you have somebody who can do some of the landscaping, remove the stone, I don't know who was helping you the day that I met you on site, um, do work around the house. But if I would like whoever's going to be doing this removal, I would like to meet with them too. OK? Yes. I'm going to try to get help. For okay. sure. We can't make recommendations, but I have a list of people, of landscapers that. that I can't make a recommendation, but we have a list that we can provide you so you can start Perfect. asking around. Okay. Okay. So just to be clear, so November 21st deadline for this work to be done and anything that's not completed in that time frame, what's the general position we would take so I would like you to come back officially to the Conservation Commission so if your deadlines November 21st which is that for Monday before the holiday um, I'd like for you to come back on December 7th which is our first meeting in December for an update and have the Commission give an update to the Commission mm. and but if you um, you know if you, if you sincerely can't get every there's certain things that need to get done immediately but if there's certain things that you can't get contractors for the commission can discuss extension but we're not at that point where we can talk about extending it yet so if we set a hard deadline then if you don't comply there could be additional enforcement action in terms of fines we don't want to get there um, but yeah right. and I think that I mean you've been and the fines at that point could be daily even daily um, and then as far as the after fact notice of intent I've said you can you can change this date if you want I threw out February 1st because it's, it gives her a couple months to hopefully get an engineer because um, you'll need a site plan so that's why I said February 1st again we have a list of engineers who do work in this area um, we can give that to you, but um, I put that date as a tentative date because that's, I mean, it's, it's three months. So just to recap where we are, um, I think based on the initial listing that you had, you had five potential violations, uh, one of which the creation of the seating area. We've, I believe we've agreed to remove. No, I no. don't so. My understanding is the only work that we're pressing for right now is just the work that was done on the slope. Everything near else. Near the slope and near the top of the slope. Fifth, in the 50. Right. Yeah. But that's the immediate concern. Everything else is open to waiting for the plan to be completed. That's what I suggest. Okay. Just are we all on the same page? Well, let me ask about these additional issues that, w that have been raised tonight with the pergola in the roof, uh, the split-fin compressor, and the electrical outlet that's down on the bank that's buried. What is uh, my opinion on that is to uh, have that included the in the after-the-fact notice of intent, and then the commission can evaluate it at that time. 
I don't think those are as serious as some of the other things. And um, so I don't really favor additional yeah. fines, but all those items should be included in the, the next proposal that we see. That's oh. my thought. My thought for this fall was to be able to get the stone and the stuff that was on the slope and immediate top out, get the site stable, mm -hmm. and then proceed from there. I, I would just add one thing to that. The electrical outlet, as I mentioned, is buried. They're going to have to dig that up to remove it. Yeah. It's, as I say, probably five to ten feet from the edge of the wetland, so there's no way we would have permitted that. And we won't permit it as, I, at least I don't think we would permit it as an after fact notice of intent. So if they're going to be working on the banks, I would like to see that taken out now as well. John? And I don't know, but there may be an electrical code violation that's awfully close to the water, and it, you know, we're not in danger of any flooding right now, but you know, an intense rainfall, uh, the water could come out. I forget how, what the elevation is above fine level there, but it's not much. No. So. And the I think yes, I agree I with you on that one already. Right. Um, I'll ask our, we have an electrical inspector in the town. Um, I'll see if he can come out too. That would be great. Okay. All right, good. And if, if not, then that would be included in, in the, the removal 1121 yes. listing. I mean, okay. we may with, with that because you may want to give her an extra couple of weeks, but um, we'll, we'll target 1121. But in the meantime, yeah, we'll try to, we'll meet with you Hopefully you can have um, somebody who's going to do some of this work out there so I can meet with them. I'm going to give you a couple lists of um, the landscapers that work in this area, the engineers who work um, nearby. Um, we're going to take, I'm going to ask the electrical inspector about the outlet near the pond and make sure it's not, you know, an immediate issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'll have the fire inspector come look too. Okay. Okay. Good. Anything else? All right. Hearing nothing. We thank, thank you for you coming much. tonight. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch thank in writing, you. and I will. I will email you and Michelle tomorrow with some dates next week. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna try for Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. Monday I can't, but Tuesday I can. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, thank next you. item on the agenda: discussion and possible vote. And this is vote to sign the the land grant award from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Amy. Yes. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> so, if you remember back at town meeting, we the town voted to buy the conservation restriction on the 75 acre what was called, going to be called the Six Ponds Great Woods Conservation Area. The trust is gonna own it, but the town's gonna hold the CR to it. The town holds a conservation restriction. We are um, eligible to get half of what we put forward as a state land grant. We applied for a state land grant for, and it's gonna, it has to be for conservation and passive recreation. It's a very competitive process. We received four hundred thousand dollars. Good, nice. So, you need to sign it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us have it. At the end Great. of the day, but you've got to vote Where's to sign the land grant, and th so that will reduce the cost. Um, we have to execute all this. We have to put a um, land management plan together. It's a big process, but it will save the tax. I mean, the taxpayers allotted eight hundred thousand. They're only going to spend four hundred thousand on it. Did you prepare the letter for that? No, but it, well, I mean, the letter to the select, um, I did a while ago. This is the actual document for you to sign tonight. Point being was I just wanted to say job well done. I didn't do as much as some other people did. I had a small hand, I will say that, but not a big one. Well, they all deserve a pat on the back. Yeah. I did, I went out there with the head of this program to try to convince them that it was a good idea and I guess I did okay. Good. But I didn't do a lot of the documents. I can't can't claim it. I mean the Harwich Conservation Trust, the um, compact helped out greatly other people in town. It was a joint effort. So okay. Okay. Just one question. Sure. Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, Amy, who is the signatory on that? Is it the entire commission or just you? Or just it is the entire members? commission. The entire commission? Okay. Thank yeah, you. because you're going to hold the restriction. Okay. Thank you want to pass that around? We can sign it while we're yeah. Well, going yeah. I mean, I've, we've got... Oh, you have other yeah, stuff? First, okay, that's No, that's, that's, that's really going to be it. Um, okay. Good. Next item on the agenda is updates on well, the... Mr. Chairman? Yes. Amy, on the agenda, you have a vote. Oh, you need to vote to, you need to vote to accept. Oh, I'm sorry, I to <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you for catching that. Can okay, we, so I'll make a motion that uh, the Conservation Commission signs the land grant award from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Thank you. Uh, second. Uh, seconded by Wayne. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Good. Motion carries. Next item then, the update on assigned ongoing land management tasks. We talked about this at the last meeting, Brad. I don't, were you here? Yep. You were, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you were missing. I was gone. Yeah, so we assigned stuff in your absence to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's the way it works. We figured it was stuff that you'd be interested in. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first item on the list was uh, fertilizer restrictions, which is, which is mine. Um, and just so people know, initially the Board of Health was going to vote at this week's meeting, I believe tomorrow, on a letter similar to the one that we've sent to the Board of Selectmen. Um, Sharon Fliegler called me yesterday, yesterday, I think, and she had some concerns about the wording on our letter and nonetheless felt that she should run the letter, draft of the letter by, the, by town council. She was concerned about the word regulation in there that we basically said we would be help the draft potential regulations or future regulations and she didn't think that would be the right format. So do you think it would be bylaw? I do not know. I have no okay. idea. Um, I've also been speaking with a gentleman by the name of Michael Reardon who's on the select board in the town of Orleans and he's basically the point person for them on their, all the work that they've done so far. Um, and if you have time to do so, go on their town website and on their conservation, I believe, or they might even have a separate page for it, uh, but they do have a page that's dedicated to this whole, this one issue. And they've got some fabulous information in there, all the background information, a lot of the reports that we've seen and passed around. Um, and they've also, included um, some of the presentations that they've done on this oh. issue. It's, it's very worthwhile to look at. Um, Ernie, are they having a public hearing in soon? Like they had week? it this week. This week. And it passed. It's already happened. It passed. Yes. Okay. My understanding is it's passed. Wow. But that means it has to go to the town, town meeting town still. Meeting. Yep. Yeah. But, um, or was that the town meeting this week? It might have been the town meeting. I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I, I didn't make that connection. But, but it's, I mean, they're going full steam ahead. Um, uh, I also spoke with uh, Michael McCaskill yesterday or the day before, and brought this up with him too. He said he's, he's, feels that there's good support for it as well. So. Um, so it's all good, I think, at this point in time. One of the things I am going to follow up with in the next couple of days is Nantucket. I gave you those contacts yes, today. Yes, you did. You see that? Thank you for that. Start with that. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I, I heard on the one hand that Nantucket had passed this and it was in effect, but now I'm hearing from other sources that no, it's not. It's still in the works. So um, I'll, I'll reach out to them and find out what the what the story is. And also, I think it'd be good information just from a background perspective to see what they've been going through as far as backlash. I mean, there's certainly enough wealthy people live on Nantucket that probably like lawns that look like an A-bomb a landed on them. So, um, sorry. We'll we'll see what see what they have to say and what kind of um, feedback and and support they had for it out there. So that's where we are on that one. It's moving ahead. Um, next thing, next item is, is dogs in Thompson Field and perhaps other lands under conservation, conservation control. That was the one we were going to give to you, Mark. Okay. So I'm trying to set up oh. a meeting with 
I still haven't found a date to set up a meeting of just a couple people with the animal control officer. Yep, I got that email and was there a tentative date? I'll work, she couldn't make the ones that I proposed. Okay. Um, so I'll propose different ones. She's not gonna come before the board? She will, but before we have a board meeting and a public meeting about this, uh, we need to chat with the-, the Yeah, board. there needs to be some conversation because I'm certain that's gonna be very contentious. Yeah, so we need to prepare that before we have a public meeting about it. Mm -hmm. if, if we have um, the animal control officer come to our meeting, would we do that in to coincide with a public hearing? No. Well, I think eventually she should come when we have that. Oh, no question. Yeah. But I think we need to have like a planning meeting um, right. of not a full forum of the commission, but myself, Mark, Ernie, if you want, um, and Jen Harrington, who's the animal control officer, okay. um, to go over the issues that she described in her email, which the commission will see, um, and get her take on things. She's there very often, I'm yep. there pretty often. Um, and take a look too at the way we acquired the property because that plays a, a role in what can happen on that property. And I, I really wanna talk to her about, you know, the comparison to other areas in town. Um, obviously this, <coughs> obviously Thompson's is the most used, but you know, I, I am curious about the other conservation areas in the town too. And conservation trust areas? The trust um, requires dogs to be on leash. You know, so should we talk to Michael Lack about that and see what, uh, how he did that? Sure, they're, I think because it's their, their it's the private, it's their own land. They're so a private entity. It's their decision, right? It's their decision. It's not. Um, they don't have to follow. I think that regs. I think some of these answers are going to come on the table when we have a conversation with animal control, and review the incidences and and uh, kind of see the cause and effect, get her take on the whole situation, and just a little more feedback before we have an open discussion about it because I think we might be a little bit blind about some of the facts still. Yeah. 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 I just want to get all of us on the same page before we have yeah. a public meeting on it. Okay, good. We will work towards that. All right, thank you. And then the next item is the Herring River study, which is Brad's. Well, uh, nothing new really. I, I submitted comments on Amy's I have to put this um, outline at the last meeting. And so I think that's in development. And so, you know, once we get feedback from the committee that Amy's assembled, then there'll be a proposal that'll be reviewed by everybody. And uh, so I'm not so, you know, Amy, you certainly have done, had a lot going on since you got back from vacation. So. Yeah, I put aside a lot of time next week um, for stuff like this. I just, between, I just haven't, since our last meeting, yep. I haven't been able to. Okay. So, so. I think there'll be a more refined outline available for people to look at. Yep, I will have that. Good. By next meeting, um, uh, or at least to the subcommittee. All right, fine, thank you. And then gate controls for, for Still the- waiting on the vendors to get back to me on pricing so that I can give you guys the proposals. What do we, are we, we're looking at an automated electric? Automated electric, I already talked, contacted the Eversource guy, the representative there, and that's okay, that's an easy task. Even though it's in the town of Dennis and Howard's line there, that's no problem. But it's just a matter of getting the right uh, specification for the right gate. I should have that information pretty soon. We're on a state contract, so we don't have to go out to bid. Or Amy won't have to go out to bid. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have to have that? Is that going to be metered? The power? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah definitely. I'll have a separate meter. So the town will have to pick up the tab for that. It'll be in the conservation's town of Howard's conservation department. Oh, okay. I mean, I would, I'll have I would to, imagine. Well, I'm going to have to put it into my town. I'm going to have to put it into my budget. It'd be minimal. Yeah. But still. My budget is minimal, so every hundred dollars is like tough for me. So I yeah. need to know a rough usage so I can budget appropriately yeah. for next fiscal year. Can they estimate that for us? Well, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. It's like a couple hundred a year. I still need to. I don't have that. I don't have that cushion right now. Yeah. Just so. Okay. Um, and then there were two other items. I didn't have names next to them at all. Uh, one was this whole issue of the alternate commission members voting in meetings where we need a quorum or- Yeah, and I need to talk to um, council and the new town clerk about that. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. So that's yours, basically. I'll then, take right? it. Yep. Yeah. I'll actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign that to Melissa. Good. Oh, good. Just on that topic. Yeah. Town meeting just the other night approved charter review. So if it's I know. a charter issue, you need to make sure that it's visible to whoever the I charter. I believe it is a charter issue. What? I believe it is a charter issue. So that's a positive thing because that's going to be open yep. for discussion. Okay, how's it going to work? They're going to now. They're going to hire somebody to look at all of our town charters and recommend changes. We so. well, we have a charter review committee, but I did they did they allot some funds for that yes. last night? Was it yeah. like seventy grand? Yeah, I yeah think it was they they're going to have uh, somebody come in and help. Good, wonderful. It's been a while. It's it's a good thing but, to be done. But yeah. whoever that is, it should be. Somebody should point that out to them. I, I will make sure. Um, yeah, I will make sure. And then the last thing was the the management of the Bell Snake Bogs. You know, are we doing? Are we going to do anything with those as far as water flow, flooding them? Yeah. Um, I, I got a brief update on that. Um, I went back to the files and just went through the, the sequence of everything, and I just want to report on that so some folks weren't around or maybe forget it, it was a while ago. So from 2017 to 19, this commission discussed leasing the bogs, Bells Neck Conservation Bogs. In um, December, no, March of 2019, the commission voted not to lease the bogs and they voted to update the management plan done by BSC Group in 2012 mm -hmm. with new management options. And then in 2020, the commission had four hearings to discuss what those options might be. And then on November 4th, 2020, the commission voted to approve option two in a, mm -hmm. in, in a management plan. And so that's kind of where we are. That, that Since then, you know, COVID and everything else turned things upside down. We had monster hearings, but um, basically, we voted on November 4th to support option two, which is a gradual naturalization, and then update the Bell's Net Conservation Area Management Plan. And so I, that, to me, is, is still pending. We have new people here, so we should have a new discussion, but that's what the commission voted for. That's what I think we should do. So I'm, I'm certainly willing to put some time towards moving that forward. And um, I think other folks probably are as well. I'll put the Bell's Neck, that management plan in Dropbox okay. so all of you can see it. Just, and I have not counting, I mean, not in addition to the bogs, I have some other suggestions um, for the rest of the document, but. Yep. Still have that surplus equipment too to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, we've obviously got new members that are, uh, I'm sure, deep interest in this, yeah. this whole issue since we voted that in. But. Yeah, if, if you could get it in the Dropbox and have folks read it. I'm going to pencil that in for a bigger discussion on November 16th. We'll see how the next meeting, I don't want to put it on, but um, yeah. we'll highlight that one for November 16th. Okay. And maybe by then, too, we would have some more information about the gates and some other right. things. All so. that, it, it all's together. I know one issue before, I think, was you had a PDF of the BSC group, the former management plan, but you didn't have, like, a Word file that we could edit. Don't. And that's what we really need, but either way. Let me way, check again. I mean, you know what? I can't remember. I might have gotten it from Matt Creighton at BSC. Yeah. An editable version. L let me check. E even if we don't, I, I just feel like enough time has passed. I think there's an obligation that we move that plan, that update. No, we forward. need to. Yeah. It I think you can import a PDF into Word. And it might be a little messy, but if what you're looking for is the text and work right. with the text, I think that's doable. Yeah, Melissa knows how to do that. I feel like you, it was, yeah. it was I an Adobe file. It was really hard to convert. I just want to say, in 2019, 2020, today, 2022, 20 years forward from now, 2042, that's going to look just like Bank Street is today, those bogs. They're doing echo restoration because it's overgrown and all these other things. Hopefully our management plan would also keep that in mind that maybe we ought to mow around the roads, maybe mow off the bogs and keep them open as an option because you're gonna run into the same situation as Bank Street is. And if we don't have a plan thinking 20 years from now, that's what it's gonna be or worse. 
all that open space that you see now is going to be gone. It's going to be all trees, 30 feet tall, and hard to go through, and poison ivy, and briars, and ditches plugged up, and flowage not working, and it's going to be a mess. So just put that on the table. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but I, you were interested in harvesting the vine at one point. Uh, yeah, we couldn't get the we didn't get that surplus of right equipment. Right now, the vines uh, that was back in the spring and that never came to fruition. Okay, still interested. Well, the vines got s severely damaged this summer with the drought. Yeah. It was. I, yeah, I got them for free they from the like conservation the trust. I yeah, I had alternate like plans, so right. I got them off Pleasant Lake Bog. We voted that same hearing to yeah, to, right. to have you take those vines. So well, not me. I'd have to bid no, on. Them. I'd have to bid on it. So they have to bid. Okay. We'll still put on an RFP and then it will get done. Okay, that's what we voted that on. That process, no, unfortunately, I didn't go forward. <laughs> Believe me, I wouldn't take is, it. Is, does anyone know if people have been in there picking? This year, they're, it, they're, it's burnt. It's um, getting, and it's getting hard to get to. You, they're it's not. Far. Last year, plenty. Last year, there was tremendous crop. Yeah. It's just the drought gonna, this it's year, just keep going they look like raisins spiral. right now. I went, went in and went picked down. a pound uh, and a lot of it, I mean, we didn't get a lot, we didn't spend a lot of time there, but there were some good cranberries, sort of. This year? This year, yeah. I mean, they were surrounded by shriveled, dried up stuff, mm -hmm. but there were, I don't There's know why some, some survived and bore mm -hmm. fruit, but. I'm wondering if the ones on the south end, where is, is a wetter bog, if those fared better or not this year, but. Yeah, we were on the north side. Yeah, I didn't, I looked quickly and I was like, this year. Just maybe we can look as a conservation commission if we can manage that property so it's open all the time. I mean, mowing it every five years or something. I gotta encourage you to read what's already been voted on by the commission. No, no, I was I was on the meeting. I was I was here. I know. Right. I so it's that. it's different from what you envisioned, and I I don't have a problem the way Bank Street Bog looks. So there, yeah. there's there's a couple different viewpoints here. Well, I'm just putting you know, it on the table because they came here to do that, and then other groups, you know. I know, so the way it stands, we voted to mow the perimeter and keep a walking path around the perimeter. So that, that has been done. Well, it's, it's really just been kept down by walkers. Um, the yeah. person who was mowing it really can't mow it anymore. Yeah. Um, we've, I've got, last year, we kind of hit it hard. We did um, invasives with AmeriCorps with volunteers. Right. Around the ditches, wow. got rid of a lot of the multiflora rows. Um, some of the olive coming in, and in the bogs, we got rid of the olive and willow coming in. Not get rid of, we pruned it back. So that's going to be a constant effort. Right. And it's just labor you're not going to have. You're going to need a machine. I mean, I'm sorry and to say that, but that's yeah, what you're going to need. I, I personally don't have a problem with gradual naturalization. I think that's great for habitat. It's kind of the purpose why these conservation lands, some of them were purchased. So I, I don't have a problem with that, but what I encourage everyone to read the plan as a commission voted on it, and let's open up a discussion. We don't have to go forward with that plan. A majority vote could choose to go another direction. So let's let's have that discussion. Let's I'll put it out for November 16th. I'll get you the documents, and I'll get, um, if you can give me those lists of those hearing dates, I can link them. That way people can watch them again. I got them written, um, written down here. Yep. OK. Yeah, if you could, I can either make a copy of the, your notes after this meeting, or you can okay. email them to me. Yep. But let's see how November 16th works out. I think November 2nd, if all of these that continued from last meeting and this meeting and new meeting and new ones came in, then it might be a larger agenda. I'll see how it looks. But let's try November 16th. Okay. I may need more than a week or two to get that together anyway. Okay, good. Uh, next item on the agenda is minutes. Can we do, um, can I let you know about a couple violations first? Sure, please. So, nothing like coming back from vacation to uh, a couple violations. So, um, Monday we got a phone call from the owner of 117 Riverside Drive, which is a peninsula that sticks out into the river. Um, if you recall, the owner of 123 Riverside Drive, it was a vacant lot. Um, he had done some clearing within the 200 foot riverfront area without any permits, then came back and had to restore that area and had his, his new house is currently up. Um, so 
the owner of that property contacted the owner of 117, which is a vacant lot, the peninsula out into the river, asking if he could remove some of the deadwood on the property. And the guy said, yeah. Well, we went out there and an excavator has been taken out there. Um, trees have been removed. The ground cover has been removed. There is now a nice view. So he will be getting an enforcement to appear before you. Um, same person who's violated before. And um, they also were supposed to replant the area between like the pool, you know, the fence and the natural area that they had seeded to, uh, to kind of revegetate it, stabilize it. They were supposed to plant that this spring with native and they haven't. And it is very much luscious lawn down there. So um, I'm hoping to have him at the next meeting for you. Um, is this the property that there was a sort of a, a wedge that went into the neighbor's yep. back? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right next, right south of uh, Salt River Lane. Um, we also, Melissa was driving on Shore Road and noticed that 15 and 19 Shore Road had been clear cut, like completely, like from the front of the property all the way out to the, the bank stripped so that literally just came up too so i don't know if those ones are for sale or had been i think they had been for sale are they lots no they're houses house lots um are there houses on it's houses on it and we looked at previous photos and there was like beautiful native vegetation in the back of one before the top of the bank and now it was completely stripped so no recommendations on a fine right yet, or is it too soon for that? I think I'm gonna have him try to come to your show to a meeting next time and have you issue. I mean, have you communicated? I can't even not yet. I haven't. I haven't even had a chance to contact. I, I we've talked with the owner of owner of 117. You know whose property this happened on 117 Riverside Drive. Um, we haven't. I haven't talked with the person who did the work, the neighbor and I haven't had a chance to talk to Shore Road yet. Um, I think I'm gonna put at least a stop work on them. I, for Riverside, um, I was gonna tentatively find per tree that was removed and then one for ground disturbance and then you can talk about also fining for not complying with their order of conditions and doing the planting this spring and potentially fertilizing and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So I haven't worked out a fine schedule for that yet. Shore Road, it's tough. It might be minimal because I can't really tell what it. Stumps are gone. Stumps are gone. Wow. Well, no. There's a couple that were there, but I think the couple that were actually there were just outside the 100 foot buffer or just at it, up closer to the road. If you have a chance, go drive by. Go so okay. To go by both? You can see it from the road okay. pretty well. I wouldn't go on the property. I mean,. We will prior to the meetings, but. Google Maps give you an idea of how, how much vegetation was there? Somewhat. It was mostly, it was mostly low shrub and ground cover. I mean, it, they were house lots that those houses have been there for a long time. Yeah. So there was a couple trees out front and most of the back was low, but now it's either bare or you could tell it was cut probably I don't know if it's been in like increments, but there's Jap between 15 and 19, there's a row of Japanese knotweed that's about this high. So it's like probably was cut a month with Japanese knotweeds aggressive. So that's like a month or two's worth of growth. So I would say late, the mid to late summer that was cut. And with the rain we had recently added. Yeah, it's really sprouting. Um, Cause otherwise if they had cut that at the beginning, like in the spring, the knotweed would have been much taller. Yeah, so two pretty large signage, especially when considering they've already violated. So. Speaking of violations, whatever happened to the Calm Electric violation? They're going to come in front of, of Avenue. Yeah, so I don't <laughs> know if I told you about this guys about this one. Um, they're coming for an after the fact filing next meeting. They filed Lothrop Avenue, the electric substation. I think I told a couple of you maybe about it. So. Um, they filled the wetland 
with stone to, because they had to put a new pole in. So Eversource usually comes in front of us for things. They didn't. They said it slipped through the cracks. So they filled in quite a bit. They uh, filled uh, in some wetlands. About 10, 12 feet wide and maybe 20 feet into right into the wet wetlands. Plus they took down a big maple tree that, yeah, they took a big maple that uh, I drove by and saw it. And I knew one of the characters that was working there. So I stopped and asked them if they had a permit. And they Call lied me. to me and said they did. And that's the uh, Ooh. When I got ticked off and called Amy, <laughs> but they tried to give me the wood from the tree they cut down. I said, no, 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 <laughs> no bribes here. <laughs> so oh, goodness. But that's just for a pole. Why do they have to? That's a substance. No, it's, it's for a pack in the truck because the truck Need that to, they yeah. leave there once in a while, when they have at nighttime, if they have an emergency situation, they leave a truck on site so that they have it readily available if there's a, something goes down. They didn't have enough room to pack it at the station, so that on the side of the station they made this packing spot. They for said it was a turn around. Yeah, they have a huge, yeah, have a huge <laughs> substation yeah, right up the street, like them. a mile. Yeah, yeah. Why could yeah, they park right, 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 yeah, they, Western end sometimes they pack in the uh, one down the near the, the church. Yeah, near no, no, twenty eight. No, this down right, oh, right, right the across church. from the parking lot, across oh, from the church, yeah, right, right across okay, from the yeah. church. Yeah, I thought he was a little. Well, they're right in us. I told them they have to do it after the fact, and they they hired an, they have an engineer, and they're coming in front of you next time, so you can. I've already told them. I said if there's any possible way you could have done this without doing that, we're gonna have you remove it. Um, there. So. What yeah. about one sixty three system? I have to check him. Next to the fire station. Yep, I will make a note. <laughs> it's Chris Pons. Any further conversation under the tech school regarding uh, Main Street? I had a conversation with Selectman McCaskill about it, and they want to put it on their agenda. The Selectman want to put it on their agenda for either their next meeting or the meeting after. He was supposed to call Ernie as well. I gave him your contact information. Um, they are supposedly, and I, I told Michael, I said I feel like we've been left in the dark a little bit about this. And um, so they want to pursue, you know, going through legislation to be able to do an educational program out there, all well and good, but where does that stand um, between the lawyers? I don't know. What are we going to do in the meantime? Um, he had told me that he was going to propose extending the lease for that person who currently holds it for a couple years. And I said, I don't know if, I said I wasn't necessarily in favor of, of three. Um, and um, I don't even know if the lessee wants that. I actually met with the lessee today for something on his own property on Factory Road. And he's talking about you know applying to get a permit or to to do a new structure on his property so he can move some of the stuff that he has on Main Street over to his actual home. So um, I said I want to know when that meeting with the board of selectmen is. I said I understand that we don't have a chart. We're not in charge of a lease because that's the selectmen, but we have care and custody of the land and have a say in what takes place out there. So. Is it even a correct course of action to have them extend that lease that way without our approval? I don't know. I, I would think not. Huh. Oni, Oni, ask me about it. I, I guess I was in favor of it um, because the way he presented the picture was that the current lessee was willing to have the extension, that he would, I won't say maintain the property, but at least it would maintain and perhaps an agricultural exemption on the property if we needed that. Um, and I didn't see any downside to it. I mean, in, in lieu of that, what would we do? Probably nothing that I can think of, unless we found another lessee, which wasn't, uh, we've tried that. I just thought three years was too long. Three years, yeah. I was more of, I well, told him, I said I'd be in favor of one, maybe two, because I want to, I don't, want to lose traction on this. We want to have progress continue to be made. And I feel like three years is, is too but long. But if we have to go the same route that we are with this fertilizer situation, I mean, that's a two-year two year 
project. Yeah, I'm not so, saying after one year you can't give another year or two, but I just giving a blanket three years. What was the was reason for the one year extension last year? They said because we didn't make a decision on the property, well, which is yeah, they interesting. Yeah, they to be done by now within a year. Uh, well, to allow the tech school concept to also Yeah, but I mean, if for the lessee, what was the reason for giving him an extra year last year? I, I felt part of it was to allow the tech school concept to what be done. The commission didn't, didn't give it, the, the selectmen did. Oh, they did? Yeah, oh, I thought, we did. I thought nope. we did. Oh. Nope. The, con the conversation going back was we were given some some dates of when the tech school was going to be ready to move and those dates didn't come to to fruition obviously the process was a lot more involved than anybody anticipated yeah then we found um, out the land and right and then that excelled and it went forward and the consensus was that by extending the, the lease for a year that gave the tech school the opportunity to follow through and do what they need to do to to posture to be able to right. go to their next step, and but I now think it's even it more now. involved. Right. Now so we got the legislature involved in the right. process, which I don't think we anticipated would. Right. Not at the beginning, no. Problem yeah. being here is in the meantime the property is fallow. Nothing's being done there. There's still a lot of items that are still there. Um, you know, we had a discussion about frag mighty control over at Bell's Neck. Um, the frag mighty right there on Main Street or ramp it. So, I mean, if there's an opportunity to deal with that, that seems to be something that we ought to be taking a hard look at. Not to mention other issues that are there. Um, an agricultural exemption can't exist if there's no work. Something has to be... Well, it doesn't expire right away either. No, no, there's, there's some time, yeah. but Five there has years. to be some activity. Five years. Yeah. Which which I think we need at this point. I mean, it's well, I don't know when his last, when it was last in what you would consider agricultural use. I mean, if you're maintain, if you're managing water, if you're doing, these are all parts of agriculture. So mm -hmm. he could, he could have, you know, if he managed water this year, if he dry, he, he dry picked some of that. Um, no, I thought uh, he dry picked that I front plot. Yeah, none of the band, at least not for this years. Year, no, not this year, but I've seen him dry pick that front block, but maybe not this year. Well, I yeah. think it's the town's responsibility to manage that property for, be it, if it's out the lease, we should be managing the lease that was on record. They got an extension, now that's come and due. His time is up. And if it was anybody else, you know, any other businesses, they'd be doing that. We're the people that should be managing it, not worrying about others that lease it now. The town should manage it and say, okay, your lease is up. Now we gotta move on. I mean, how long are we gonna just keep kicking it down the road? Well, until we figure out if the tech school's gonna get in there. But that's just a way of, we, sh we should have had a drop dead date saying, okay, September, they're not doing it, so let's move on. Well, I, I mean, I. I mean, we can say the tech school for 10 years, <laughs> right? I mean, time will go quick. Yeah. Ernie, yeah, I have two questions. One is, what's going on on the property now if we extend the lease? Nothing. Are, uh, are we in violation of the legislation? Potentially there's, I mean, I, I don't know because the way that the property, I don't know if the way the property, all of the property is being used it coincides with the way the land was acquired. Okay. So that's a question that I think we need to resolve before there's any lease extension. The second thing that um, I'm concerned about is, is I don't know what the terms of the existing lease is as to whether or not it gives an automatic extension. No. no. Okay, it if it doesn't give given. an automatic extension, doesn't it raise uh, the fact that you need to go out to bid for uh, any type of extension? Because that I don't know. Yeah, well, unless it's an automatic automatic extension in the current lease that was bid and put into place originally, I think the town is at risk by just extending the lease without going out to bid. Unless he has an option to, to renew yeah, it. Yeah, if there is an option to renew the lease, yeah, then that's not solves Even it, if it's not automatic, I mean, we could, he it, can still agree to it. Yeah, if there is that in the current lease. Yeah. 
but I just don't know whether there's anything like that in the current lease. No, I, 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 I think it's more an so. emergency action, uh, so to speak, by the select board to make this extension happen quickly. And I think this commission didn't object to that. Um, so, and secondly, we, we asked the leaseholder to clean up a lot of things in that property, and that hasn't happened. Right. So for it me, did some very recent work, but there, it's there okay. getting there. Yeah. There, there has been some progress, I will say. Okay, that's good. So Last for me, weekend, it's still inappropriate to have the select board to they extend that lease for three years without it. first us approving that. I, I don't think that's a, you know, procedurally, I don't think that's correct. So even if it's in the well, best we're interest, we're not party to the lease. I mean, oh yeah, we sure we are. We 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 it's drafted. Right on our, it's right on our. Yeah, we, uh, we drafted everything to do with it. She has a whole file on it on the. Yeah, we called the Dropbox. We it originated here, and we're the ones that approve it, and then it's actually. But it's guess, signed. Implemented. By the, by the board of select board. Right. Yeah. But it, you know, so to me, you know, a three-year extension without us coming through us, I think that's inappropriate. Mm. Well, I'll let you know when that meeting is going to be. No, I, I won't say this. And it public. might be the right way to, it might be the right thing for the town, but I, I think we should have a discussion with that. I, I kind of like Amy's leaning of, of a one year, maybe a two year. Um, just If that's allowable, and we have to see if the current practices are. Well, I like what Jim says about if it's yeah. not in the lease, right. then it's not legal. You've got to go right. on the bid. There's certain, that's yeah. why you have the 30B. And right. the lease and and I, I mean, going back to. And then this last year, yeah. Like, uh, it was pack. kind of that. And didn't it? Was it November? Yeah, it's November first, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but going back to Alan's point, if the lease, you know, I expires, you know, it's still town property. It's under our care and control. That's right. Whatever management has to occur, you know, okay, we'll have to take up that management. Uh, you know, but that would be for the interim period of time until this issue can be worked out with the tech school. And if we need legislation, um, you know, that could get through the legislature certainly within the next year. One thing that concerns me up there is the junk that's up there, the automobiles and the trucks and machinery and stuff. Those things all have motor oil mm -hmm. and things in them. Right. And all, all of a sudden they're gonna deteriorate to the point they're gonna start leaking on the ground. I mean, right around and you know you got a cranberry bog there you got a pond right there you gotta get that stuff out of there yeah. and that's been directed ASAP. that's been already <coughs> told so yeah yeah and god only knows what's in that barn right now okay all right i'll get on it okay as much as i can <laughs> got a task <laughs> lucky. it's fine i have a lot of energy <laughs> <laughs> back on vacation. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. May I bring up one other topic? Sure. This is the time. Uh, we were, three of us were on the Skinniquit Herring Run the other day, clearing out, and Brad pointed out that there's a bunch of knotweed growing up, up upstream from where the big stand of Pragmites is. Um, and so we had a casual conversation about whether we should be trying to do anything about the knotweed that is fairly small clumps at this point, but they're gonna get out of control. And I personally am in favor of investigating some kind of herbicide treatment of those things. I don't know how to proceed with that exactly. Who owns the property? Is it a little bit upland? It's on the bank. It's on the bank, yeah. uh, but it's if you right looked on at the mass, bank. if you look went on Mass Mapper, could you show it to like show it to me so we could see whose it is? If it's Melissa saw it too in the run or if it's, it's on, right on, on property, it's right on the bank, the slope of the bank, and it's Those either people, in, there might be some on the Heffernan property there because yeah. it's on the north bank, but it might be. There's probably some a little further upstream from, I don't know where the Heffernan is. I'll ask Melissa. She mentioned knotweed. A little so what is the in. lot behind Heffernan? Is that the uh, wetland lot that was actually on the market a few years ago? Just upstream? I know who there? it is. I thought, I know who owns it. I can't think of it, but I know what you're talking about. I see. There were a few pieces last year. This year, it's amazing. 
the, the change from one so year to bad. the next. It's so bad. It's awful stuff. <clears throat> and we could hit it and rip out a lot of it, but further up, the roots are already there, so it probably needs some kind of treatment. Okay. As opposed to manual pulling, but yeah, that poor run. At least there's water running through it now. Yep, John found a fish, a dead fish, so at least some were trying to get out. So somebody had taken a bite out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Raccoon or otter or something, maybe? A little bite. I don't know. A little bite. <laughs> All right. Any Those other fish are pretty little. Any other comments? Issues? Any minutes? Minutes? Uh, were I, there any? I didn't oh. see any in drop okay. uh, She's with me. When I one of us are out, it's yeah, impossible I, for I the figured. other to get anything done. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I didn't expect to find any, but. Okay, I just couldn't. I <coughs> to that. She's right. doing, we're doing our best. You gotta go on vacation someday and not come back. <laughs> <laughs> Boring, I'll tell you that. A lot of work created tonight. Fine. We've got uh, papers to sign. So, can we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Oh yeah, I gotta sign. So on these, there's two sign here, three sign here. So three.